Bless you all. There is definitely in the house of the Lord tonight. Brother Barry, it's good to have you here. I you know, mean, your daddy were like, we're like brothers. Almost like we had the same mom. We just love and love the whole family. And I appreciate them. They hold you up. They've prayed for me many a time. I know they hold me in prayer. And I, I love them. love all y'all. Uh, Pastor Mark asked me to say something about this hand. I'll, some of you know that I got my hand hurt about six weeks ago. And uh, the, it's like the whole day was ordered by God. It's like uh, everything I did that day, God had me in his hand take care of me. That's a picture of my hand a week after surgery. Right there. About lost. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say what I did was a smart thing. I got in the table saw. I'm not, <laughs> I've never been accused of being real smart, Brother Barry. <laughs> but it happened. And uh, I was down there working on this house by myself, just to rest today. And uh, one of my friends called me up and said, let me bring you some lunch. I said, no, I'm just going to go home tonight. So I worked through the day. It's getting up late today. Didn't eat anything. Got my hand hurt. Called my wife. Fingers went through the table saw. I called my wife and said, I'm going to drive myself to the hospital. We'll meet me there. I got a six speed truck. So, you know, y'all you know that's a God thing. When you can drive a six speed truck, your hands are worth like that. <laughs> got to the hospital. And uh, so we can't do anything for you here. So, but you won't find a hand surgeon on the East Coast tonight. I, my brother Mark was there. So, there's no hand surgeons available. So I want to say none available. So they get on the phone and they call that Bristol. Not only was there a hand surgeon there, there was a renowned hand surgeon there that did microsurgery that wrote books on hand surgery. And that's my God right there, son. He took care of that. I said, have you had anything to eat lately? I said, I haven't eaten since breakfast. I said, that's a good thing. Because if, you if you'd eaten, we couldn't operate on you. So see, God had that whole day planned out from start to finish. Don't know why it happened. I'm not going to question why it happened. God didn't wish this on me. He didn't wish it on me, but he'll turn it into a blessing. And I came right here in this church and asked my brothers to anoint my hand and pray for me. I want you to look at it. I'm missing a finger, but there's no scar. And I'm getting the use of that hand back. And it's getting better every day. Every day that hand gets better. Yeah. Yeah, glory to God. I mean, can you believe that man has no scar in it? And I got a finger in this, and I know that. And could God grow a finger back there? Absolutely. If God wants me to have a finger back, He can. But I'm pleased with that hand. You've seen this sign, these people used to feed peace and love, and they, and they turned it into a devil sign. Why well, can't do that on that hand? So I told Mark, I'm going to call that my Trinity hand. My Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's all I got right there. Yeah. And my brother. That's not the only thing. I had cancer. I had cancer it'd be ten years ago next spring. And the doctors told me. The doctors told me, says you need to make your final arrangements. It was bad. It was stage four was in my bone marrow. Every lint node of my body and a couple of my organs involved. And I was a sick man. And they said, You need to make your arrangements. I, I said, get back. I said, I serve a God that can heal me. They said, Man, you're crazy. I had a doctor actually tell me I was crazy. She was an atheist. She took care of me, good medical attention, but she denied the power of God. I went to this brother's church and they prayed for me. My wife called me and she said, they want to pray for you down at Raven Assembly. Is that all right? I said, if they're good enough to pray for me, I'm going to be good enough to go. And they prepared that sanctuary and they prayed for me. And I'll tell you, this was a life-changing experience. If you've never felt... If you've never felt the glory of God, yeah. being slain in the spirit, fall down on your hands and knees and feel like a lightning bolt hits you, you don't yeah. know what the power of God is. Yeah. I'm not going to deny that. I serve a loving God, yeah. a healing God. Yeah. He said, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 that he was pierced for our transgressions. Yeah. By his stripes we are healed. It doesn't say, does it say we might be healed? Does it say, well, when he gets around to it, we'll be healed? It's absolute. The Bible does not lie, folks. The word of God is true. It's true. It's it's true from time from time beginning until time ending. Don't do not deny the power of God. So you don't have to be sick. I'm telling you, if you're sick, I don't care if you got a, an addiction or if you got a physical affliction, you don't have to be sick. That's not God's will for your life. Come on, God does not want you to be sick. He does not want you to be poor, to be without, to be downtrodden, to be depressed. We, we serve a loving God, and He wants good things for His children. Yeah. 
You do not have to be in want and be sick. Brother Bob, am I telling the truth? Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. If you know somebody that's sick, or if you're sick yourself, you get with some believers. Yeah. Some people that absolutely Come believe on. what you believe. Believe the word in the Bible. Yeah. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Amen. He was pierced. He took those, those stripes for you. Yeah. He Amen. took those stripes for your benefit and my benefit. We didn't deserve it, but he took them. I believe in it 100%. And if you come up here, if I'm in this service sometime, I'm in this church, and you're sick, I'm going to pray for you. They're going to pray for you, and we're going to believe for a hill. It, it'll be in God's time and God's will. Not our will, but God's will. It's what God wills, not what we will. But we'll believe with you, and we'll pray with you that God will make a change. He can change. He's a game changer. Ten years ago, I was supposed to be in the ground. God kept me here for a reason. I'm not a good man. I won't tell you I'm a good man. I don't deserve to be here. I deserve to be dead. But God kept me here for a reason. Maybe just for this one moment right here in time. He kept me here so I can speak a word to somebody that's hurting. But I love y'all, and my heart bleeds, and you hurt, I hurt. When, when you hurt in this church, this whole body of Christ comes for you. We love you. We want to hold you up. We serve a great God. Yeah. Not a little tiny God. Not a little tiny God, but a great God. Yes. Thank you, I love you. George